Next, we turn to Morocco, home to the largest solar energy plant in the world. Today, the planet Earth meets over 80 percent of its energy needs with either coal, oil or gas. But as climate science and breakthrough technology disrupt the energy sector, Morocco is taking advantage of an abundant natural resource, unobstructed sunlight, to power part of the North African nation. Special correspondent Monica Villamizar looks at a giant $9 billion project. It's part of our ongoing series, Peril and Promise on the Challenge of Climate Change. Glimmering in the Sahara Desert, a first-of-its-kind solar energy plant. Nur, which means light in Arabic, is so vast it can be seen from space. From the air, it's an ocean of reflective mirrors. But on the ground, as we drive into Nur, sunglasses are mandatory protection from the blinding rays. I like it. It's a great project, great opportunity. 28-year-old Mustafa Ibaritan is part of the team of local engineers working for the project. Nur is owned by the state of Morocco and built by Spanish company Sener. The project is based in Warsazat, a tiny tourist town at the edge of the desert. In Morocco, we don't have petrol, we don't have gas. To be independent, to have our own energy, we have chosen to, to use the clean energy because of the, the climate change challenge. Morocco does have sunlight about 3,000 hours of sun every year. And harnessing that light is an evolutionary leap for the country. Right now it's the most popular solar plant in the world. I'm proud to be part of this project. Noor uses CSP or concentrated solar power. Concave mirrors direct the sun to a middle tube to heat an oil solution. The mirrors rotate as the sun moves like sunflowers. The heated fluid, which reaches 750 degrees Fahrenheit, produces steam to power a turbine. The King of Morocco is making a huge bet on clean energy. And the goal is that renewables will power half of the country by 2040. Within this strategy, Noor, the solar plant, is the flagship project. The North African nation says it wants to be the Saudi Arabia of solar energy, tapping its vast solar reserve. Morocco's king inaugurated Noor and flipped the plant's on switch in February 2016. This was a huge, brave decision at the time when they took it. Uh, uh, 2009, 10, everybody was laughing. It was a very expensive. It was a very brave decision. Back in 2003, the think tank Club of Rome came up with an ambitious project called Desertec. The idea harness solar energy across the Sahara to power all of Europe. Desertec set the guidelines on how to produce uh, renewable energy in the desert uh, to supply electricity to Europe. Francesco Stepo is President Emeritus of the Club of Rome in the U.S. Now other organizations are implementing the Desert Tech concept. Stepo says the Noor plant in Morocco and another plant under development in Tunisia are pilots of the Desert Tech idea. The plan originally had ambitions to open solar energy farms across the Sahara, but the Arab Spring uprisings of 2011 and terrorist attacks on gas facilities in Algeria force them to scale back. Geopolitical instability is always uh, the main obstacle for the implementation of these kind of projects. Renewable energy continues to be the fastest growing segment of uh, the energy space. Sarah Ladislaw is a senior fellow at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. She says there's economic risk to any new large infrastructure technology. Downside with any project that is um, groundbreaking is that you're going to experience um, cost or logistical or technological or market-based hurdles uh, that you might not have expected. The upside is that once you've done it, then we know more about the cost and the ability for those costs to decline over a period of time. CSP's critics say it isn't cost effective. Noor's price tag was $9 billion. Long term, it could recover the investment if the technology doesn't become outdated too quickly. Before the government of Morocco started building the Noor plant in the town of Warzassat, the area was best known as a tourist stop with breathtaking sights and its own miniature version of Hollywood. Game of Thrones, Gladiator and Lawrence of Arabia were all filmed here. He's looking at you, kid. 
The classic Casablanca actually hinted at why concentrated solar power technology is a challenge to implement in Morocco. It requires vast amounts of water. I came to Casablanca for the waters. The waters? What waters? We're in the desert. I was misinformed. Engineer Moisin Ait Ali showed us this man-made lake that was built just so Noor could operate. He said the reservoir addresses the plant's water demand. The solar complex uses about 6 million cubic feet of water each year, and that's about 1% of the storage capacity of the lake. It distributes the, the water to all the plant on site. The engineers are most excited to talk about the next phase, still under construction, North 3. So this is the tower. After the, the construction, it will be the, the highest building in Africa with 246 meters. The tower looms over North 3. It will incorporate a newer technology where flat mirrors bounce the sun's rays to the tip of the tower. So here in North 3, we have around uh, 7,000 mirror. The solar energy is stored in molten salt, which means the plant can keep making electricity for seven hours after sunset. When it's finished later this year, Noor will provide electricity to over two million people. It has generated high expectations for Morocco and the future of solar power. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Monica Villamizar in Warsazat, Morocco.